Do you like spicy food? And have you ever wondered if spicy food is okay to eat? And how spicy can it be before it starts doing harm or doing good? There you go. Do you like spicy food? So, so yeah, I, I do now. Okay, I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. I'm Dr. Brad Wing. Welcome to Talking with Doc. So let's start with a little anecdote. Yeah, so let me have it. When my wife and I first met each other, we were on our first date. Mm -hmm. Went to an Indian restaurant. Oh boy, and that's spicy food. Yeah, and she's like, what do you want? I said, I'll just go ahead and order. Yeah. Knowing that there's some spicy items yes. on Indian uh, menus. And so she's like, oh, we'll get a little bit of this, a little bit of this. And she orders the beef vindaloo, mm. which is an item, if you're familiar, that the waiter comes over and says, oh, just so you know, this is like the hottest thing that we have on your menu. Are you guys okay with the that? The hottest thing at an Indian restaurant. Right. To a guy it's like it comes out to warn to you. He comes out to warn you, like, yeah. that's how hot okay. it is. Okay. And she's like, are you okay with spice? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I'm Dutch background, like meat and potatoes, yeah. super bland, you Flowers. know what I mean? Pepper was like pushing the limits in my house growing up. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah. Knowing I'm terrified of spicy food. Not because I don't like it, it's I can't yeah. handle it. Mm -hmm. So Oda comes, I start eating, and it's like, I'm like melting. Like like Ben Stiller in Along Came oh, Polly. Oh, show that or, clip. Are you okay? Because you're sweating pretty profusely. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I always react this way to spicy food. Okay. Yeah, but I love it. Yeah, um, dying a slow death, like more yogurt, please, more anything, I had a Corona, you know what I mean, anything, just give me something, I'm on fire here. And then years later, she's like, we're gonna have something, I'm like, I don't really like spicy, she's like, what? We need to like spicy food, we had, I'm like, I know, I did that, what am I gonna say? No, I don't want to have spicy food. Yeah, uh, anyway. first date, well, there you go. I feel like it paid off, you know, <laughs> you've been off. married yeah. for many years. That's right. Sucked it up. Sucked it up. All right, what so about you? you? Um, I do like I do like spicy food, but I've all, I've always been worried that it's not good for me right. and not good for my stomach. Well, we're gonna we're gonna address that today. Yeah. Okay. Maybe the red hot chili peppers were onto something. Yes. Give it oh. away. Give it away. Give it away now. We'll have to check out Pearl Jam next. Okay. So. Or the Spice Girls. Okay. Do you like the Spice Girls? I you know they're. Who's your favorite? Spice they left girl? a lot of money on the table. I think the yeah. Spice Girls should get back yeah. together. To do you have a favorite? I don't really. Come on. Yeah. I used to like sporty spice, but I switched to posh. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. So, what is the active component of spicy food? Is there a, is there a molecule? Yes. Yes. Well, you have cayenne, and in the cayenne you have capsaicin. Right. And you've heard of capsaicin before, because a lot of topical pain treatments have capsaicin in it. Right. All right. So, what is it about spicy food that interacts with our health or affects our health? Is it good for us or is it bad for us? Okay. So, so I'd say there are some significant health benefits. Okay. And then I'd say there's a small subpopulation that needs to be a little bit careful with it. Okay. But All generally right. speaking, it's safe. Okay, yes. let's talk about it. Okay. Number one, what's one health benefit? So pain relief. So um, capsaicin binds to a receptor called the TRPV1 receptor. Okay. This is a pain receptor. So this is why when you eat spicy food, you experience pain. Okay. And then uh, there's a pain molecule called substance P that gets released, and this experiences the like that fiery perception inside of your mouth, a lot of them inside your mouth, but throughout your body there are pain receptors, just not the TRV, TRPV1. So what happens is when you take this, mm -hmm. pain goes up. But if you eat a lot of spicy food, mm -hmm. if you kind of build up to it, you actually build tolerance by desensitizing these receptors and eventually reducing or depleting the amount of substance feed that's around so that it becomes progressively less painful. So you actually can train to tolerate spicy food, which I've done. And if you're using that uh, topical with capsaicin in it, that's why you have to keep using it for a little while before it really takes effect. Right. Okay, number one, pain. Number two, your metabolic rate goes up just a little bit when you eat these spicy foods, okay? Right. Uh, so what does that mean? It means that you can burn fat a little bit quicker yep. and you might actually lose a little teeny tiny bit of weight. Right, okay. and there's that thermogenesis, like you literally sweat. Like you that sweat, you heat up. Requires calories. And that uses up energy. Now, if this is your only weight loss strategy is to go to Brad's Indian food restaurant, order the hottest thing on the menu, it's not gonna work. But that's one of the suspected effects of the spicy food and metabolism and weight loss. For sure. Number three is, is appetite regulation. So there's some thoughts that it reduces a substance called ghrelin, which is responsible for, for hunger. So mm -hmm. it can reduce your desire to eat. So that's, again, a small effect. Okay. And cardiovascular health. Okay. There is some evidence to suggest that it does actually reduce your LDL, okay. which is your bad cholesterol, which is implicated in poor cardiovascular health. Right. So that's one purported benefit. Number five is for your digestive health. So by eating spicy food, it actually causes our bodies to release more acid to break down the food, which yeah. seems kind of counterintuitive that it wouldn't be helpful, but that can be helpful. And also sometimes to create more mucus that helps protect the lining of the stomach. All right. Okay. And finally, we talk about this a lot, yeah. and you've seen this a lot, anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. There is some theoretical evidence that suggests that these do have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects, which are generally beneficial. Yeah, and some studies have shown it actually reduces a compound called tumor necrosis factor alpha, which plays a significant role in 
uh, in inflammation. Um, and then on the anti-cancer side, that this anti antioxidant capability can reduce things like breast cancer and colon cancer, not as specifically as a treatment, but the whole compounds, particularly as, as cayenne pepper, not as capsaicin as an extract or in a capsule, the whole compound, essentially like so many plants have, have many benefits. You know birds can't sense the capsaicin? They can't sense it? No, they, it's fine, they can eat it, they don't, it has no effect on them. Well guess what, write this tip down, because if you have a skunk, and I'm actually about to implement this at my house, apparently skunks are very sensitive to it. Yes. So I have a skunk laying underneath my shed, and I've been trying to fill the hole in every day, mm -hmm. and they're oh, so right. industrious, I go out the next day, the hole comes yeah. back and I fill it in. Try so now, it. cayenne pepper apparently works magic because it burns yeah. their little eyes. It doesn't hurt them, but it makes it's them irritated. So bird food, if you have a bird feeder, yeah. and you mix in some cayenne pepper, it'll the, stop the rodents from getting oh, in. Oh, the you. squirrels, that's a great yeah, idea. right, that's what you do. However, I did this, we had in the backyard, I had the bird feeder, <sighs> okay. and I had a bunch of cayenne, I went, you know, it says to put in a much, I doubled it. I put a ton of cayenne because the sure. squirrel kept eating. Because you're bird. so extra. Then I was mowing the lawn, and oh, I was no. sweating. It was a hot day, and I knocked the bird feeder, <gasps> and all the bird food with the cayenne pepper went down my sweaty back, and oh. lit me up. And then did you see like six squirrels like yeah. pointing, laughing. laughing? Yeah, yeah. So you have to be careful with that, but okay. it does work. We're okay, who should not? Eat super spicy food. Okay, so if you have an established GERD, probably is the number one group. Gastroesophageal reflux disease. Right, so if you have, if you eat a lot of it, theoretically it could increase your risk of getting GERD, but if you already have GERD, it's probably going to aggravate that. Yeah. Also, if you had an active ulcer, probably is not a good idea, but generally speaking, there's, there's or relatively. If you have a hemorrhoid. Yes. That might irritate that. There's the relatively robust evidence to show that eating spicy food does not cause ulcers, because I definitely thought. Because people say, oh, literally, it's causing yeah, an ulcer. that's what I was worried yeah, about. Yeah, but it actually doesn't do that. Yeah, but it can exacberate it if you already have the beginning of one or yes. if you have heartburn, gastroesophageal. I would, I would say that's the main group. So, so when we talk about spicy food, how do they, how do they gauge how spicy foods are? Oh, trivia. It's the trivia. Scoville scale. The Scoville or the Scoville heat units, that, mm -hmm. the SHU or the SHUs. Yeah. So Scoville, interestingly, was an American pharmacist right. who was looking into some of the health benefits of, of cayenne and capsaicin. What he did is he took pepper extracts and diluted them down with sugar water right. to the point where people couldn't taste them anymore. And that's okay. how they developed the number, depending on how much dilution it required. Mm -hmm. And so like a jalapeno pepper has like between 4,000 and 8,000. Mm -hmm. And then all the way up some of the hotter peppers like habanero is like, is like a million. Mm -hmm. And then the Carolina Reaper. That's the big one. Has like over 2 million of these Scoville units. Right. An interesting story about the Carolina Reaper. So, if this, you're going to eat one, if you're going to eat one, and we advise don't because mm -hmm. it might hurt you, is this guy named Ed Curry who worked for the Puckerbutt Pepper Company. That's a real name of but, a company? Pucker yeah. Butt? I guess because the peppers are so hot, it makes your butt pucker. Okay. And it seems like it would. That's hot. Yeah. In yeah. South Carolina. And he was a little bit of a, a farmer meets geneticist meets sadist. Yeah. And so he. He um, crossed the Pakistan, Pakistani Nega Viper pepper, which is a hot pepper, with a specific type of habanero pepper, and then that's where the Carolina Reaper was, was, born. was born. Okay, that's and it's like butt. known to pucker your butt. Yeah, now they changed the name to Butts on Fire Company. Yes. All right. Yes. So there you have it. That's how you measure the scale. So spicy food. Yes. If you're thinking of eating it and you like it. Yep. Don't worry, it's probably not bad for your health. In right. fact, there are some health benefits to eating spicy food thanks to the capsaicin and its effects on your body. Sure, try, yeah, try to eat it in its whole form if you can. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can build up tolerance. If you'd, like, if you'd like to start using it, you can slowly build up the tolerance by eating it over and over. Yeah. And if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel, leave a comment about your experience with peppers. And remember, you are in charge of your own health and you're in charge of how spicy the food is that you eat. We'll see you next time.